on around. My words are easy to examine. I don't have time to type everything out, though we are putting, as of today or tomorrow, should be, my entire seminar will be on my website. You can click a button and watch the videos and listen to the audio, free of charge, and then you can challenge anything I'm saying. And if you think I'm misquoting somebody, please let me know. I'm certainly not perfect, and I've made lots of changes through the years. He mentioned evolution as a theory like gravity. Now, that is absolutely ridiculous comparison. Gravity has evidence. We can observe it happening. We don't observe anything about what he said about evolution. To compare evolution with gravity is, is silly. There's, I, well, sure, we can watch things happen. We can watch gravity. There's testable evidence. Where is the testable evidence for macroevolution? Where is the testable evidence for cosmic evolution? Where is the testable evidence for organic evolution? There is none, and that's what my offer is all about. So don't compare evolution to gravity. And then he said, we, you know, we, we should, if, we, if we reject evolution, we have to reject science. Well, that's a ridiculous comparison. I don't reject science. I defy you to show me one beneficial thing we have in the world today because of the evolution theory. What good has it done? Is that why we have electricity? Is that why we have computers or video projectors? Is that why we have, can you name anything we have in the advancement of science because of the evolution theory? When you, when you have your time in just a minute. Um, as far as mutations of viruses, modern medicine, all of the branches of modern science were started by creationists. The evolution came in like a leech and took over what they'd already created. They don't ever create anything new. They take over universities that were started by Christians and creationists like 97% of the first colleges in America were started by Bible-believing Christians. They come in there and take them over, but they don't start their own. It's like a leech. They've got to take over what somebody else does. What good has evolution done? You mentioned about star formation. I believe I got your quote. You said it may be happening now. You saw some pictures of the Hubble telescope sending back. This is typical. They say, well, evolution, you know, we, we have evidence coming in right now. Or the, they're studying this in the laboratory. What? We've been studying it for 120 years. Where's the evidence that has stood the test of time? Why is it always, well, we're looking at it right now. Well, that's not evidence yet. Let's see something that has stood the test of time. Nobody has proven the formation of any stars. They're seeing a bright spot in Crab Nebula, saying, wow, it might be a star forming. Well, it might be the dust is clearing, and you're seeing a star that was behind it all along. We don't know yet. Let's see some evidence that stood the test of time. He's mentioned about majority rule. Well, 91% of the population of America believes God created the world. 47% of them believe he did it in the last 10,000 years. If we're really going to have majority rule, then let's throw evolution out, since so few people believe it anyway. He mentioned about 98% DNA similarity. Now, this is interesting. Since only 1% of the DNA has even been studied and analyzed and decoded, it's a little premature to say it's 98% similar. If it is 98% similar, 98.2, I believe you said, to humans and chimpanzee DNA, that would prove we have a common designer. It doesn't prove we have a common ancestor. The same God designed the animals. That's what it proves. I think it was pretty smart for God to make all of the plants and animals from the same basic amino acids so that a brown cow can eat the green grass and digest it and turn it into white milk, which turn it into yellow butter, and I eat it and get blonde hair, all made from the same amino acids. That's not proof that we came from a common ancestor. It's proof the designer was thinking. See, if we didn't all have the same similarities, we could only eat each other. We wouldn't be able to digest anything else. So it was smart for God to make things from the same building block. The argument that similar DNA proves a common ancestor is like saying, I have two books on the table, and I've analyzed all the words in these two books, and I noticed they have exactly the same 26 letters. They would, wouldn't they? This proves they both evolved from an explosion in a print shop 10 billion years ago. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous, okay? This proves somebody's using the same 26 letters with intelligent design behind it to create words and paragraphs and sentences. An intelligent designer took the 20 amino acids and put them in to make uh, protein strands, which makes the cells, which makes our complex bodies, that were all come from the same designer. And it wouldn't hold up two seconds in a court of law to say, similar DNA proves evolution. <laughs> Any freshman law student would say, no, this could just as easily prove a common creator. And the kids ought to be taught both. He mentioned Catholics and Lutherans believe in evolution. Well, that's, those are the ones that haven't been to my seminar. If they would come, we would straighten them out. <clears throat> he mentioned about empirical evidence, and his, his answer was, I said, where's the empirical evidence? He says, well, we don't live long enough. Now, now think about that. If we could see it for 100,000 years, come back in 100,000 years, you might see the evidence. What that is really saying is, we can't show it to you. Is that what it, is that what it, okay. 
Therefore, that's my point. It's not science. It's not observable. It's something you believe in, and you're welcome to believe in that, Dr. Hartman, but don't call that science, and for heaven's sake, quit using tax dollars to teach that religion to the students. I'll tell you what. If we come back in 100,000 years and see that things really have evolved, then we'll, we'll start teaching it. Until then, it does not belong in education. What he translated that his sentence was, we don't have the evidence. My offer's on my website. As far as creating a new universe, I never said that to those guys from South Africa with the weird names that wrote me the letters. I corresponded with them a half a dozen times. They never would send any evidence. They did the same thing they always do. Well, who's on the panel? You know, where's the bank? What, 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 what's the account number for the bank and all this stuff? I said, look, my word is good. You send the evidence. They never do send the evidence. All they do, I was in a debate one time in, in Minnesota, and this lady said, there's lots of evidence for evolution. I said, let's see it. She said, well, there's just, there's just lots of it. I said, okay, let's see it. Well, there's just, there's just so much. Okay, show me one. Oh, there's just, there's just lots of it. Okay, show me one. They never do show you one, folks. All they do is say there's lots of it. And these guys claim that they want to pick on my offer over some little straining at a gnat, and they're swallowing the camel of believing that we all came from a rock over 4.6 billion years. Man, that's ridiculous. My offer is good. The, my, my point is evolution has six different meanings. I would like empirical evidence for all six. There is none. Uh, my offer is clearly spelled out on my website, drdino.com. Look it up. He asked, are the, are the judges all creationists? First place, I don't know. Second place, I wonder why that question would even come up. Because does that determine whether a person is qualified to be a scientist or not? In the minds of some, it certainly does. In other words, if you believe in creation, you're not a scientist. This sounds like the Soviet Union 10 years ago. If a teacher stood up in the Soviet Union and said, you know, kids, I don't think communism works. I think capitalism is a better system. What would happen to that teacher? He'd be out shoveling snow in Siberia, right? And then the leaders get up and say, hey, everybody believes in communism. Well, of course they do. Look what happens if you don't. Evolution, the textbooks are, are, are full of lies that are shown to the kids to try to get them to believe in evolution. And I resent that. You have varieties of corn, and they probably had a common ancestor, and it was a corn of some kind. And there's all sorts of kinds of corn today, but you still crossbreed them and you still get corn. You never get a hamster or a tomato or a whale to grow on your corn stalk. Nothing changes. There's varieties of dogs, and they probably had a common ancestor. You have big horses and little horses, and they might have had a common ancestor. And as far as the horse and the zebra and the mule not being able to breed, well, what, we, what we're seeing is branches on a tree that came from a common root, and now they're so different they can no longer interbreed. That still doesn't prove they didn't have a common ancestor. Think about the argument. He's saying a horse and a donkey or a mule or jackass or whatever it was he mentioned cannot breed and produce fertile offspring, and therefore they're different species. Well, maybe so. If, if we, if, it depends on your definition of species. Who gets to, who gets to decide what the defini definition of species is, for one thing? But get a horse and a zebra and put a five-year-old next to him and say, are these the same kind of animal? Oh, yeah. Anybody could tell you they're the same kind of animal. Seeing the branches on the tree where they now have diversified, where they're no longer interfertile, well, that doesn't prove they didn't have a common ancestor. It also certainly doesn't prove the horse and the banana are related to a rock 4.6 billion years ago. We got varieties of cows and things happen, but the textbooks contain things that just aren't true. I've got a whole two and a half hour video going through lies in the textbooks that kids are exposed to to try to get them to swallow this evolution theory. And it's really sad. They're going to tell the kids the appendix is vestigial. Well, I'm sorry, the appendix is part of the immune system. It is not vestigial. Take that out of the book, okay? There's no such thing as a vestigial structure. This book tells the kids that the whale used to walk around. It says the whale has a vestigial pelvis and leg bones. Vestigial pelvis and leg bones, evolution of its, uh, evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling ancestors. Well, the guy that wrote this is either ignorant of his whale anatomy or he's a liar because th those bones are essential for the whale.